Hi there. Welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number nine for chapter eight, and the topic is Fourier series and eigenvalue problems. In this video, we'll introduce a new type of problem that's called two-point boundary value problems. And this will be useful for the later studies of eigenvalue problems and eventually useful for solving partial differential equations. Okay, so let's introduce this type of problem. So let y as a function of x be the unknown. And then we consider the second order linear ODE in the following general form. So y double prime plus p y prime plus a q y equals g, where p, q, g are three functions of x over an interval. Um, x lies in from x1 to x2. And then um, we are given the boundary conditions. This is the new feature here. The boundary conditions, one is given at the left at x1 and the other is given at x2. So here in this example, we have the y value at x1 shall be y1 and at x2 shall be y2. Okay, so because of the fact that conditions are given at two boundary points, this type of problems are called two-point boundary value problems. And let's introduce another concept of uh, homogeneous boundary conditions. And so the boundary values are y1 and y2 at x1 and x2. In the case where these two values are zero, and this boundary condition is called homogeneous. Okay, let's put in the remark. Um, in this example, we are given boundary conditions of the value of the unknown, but the boundary conditions could be of many other forms, such that the derivative at x1 is given, or derivative at x2 is given, and even you can combine them, some linear combination of the function value and the derivative at x1 or x2 shall be given. But uh, to, for the sake of simplicity and just to introduce the topic and to set the idea, let's focus on this example first. And now we see that um, this is just a second order linear ODE, which we have encountered earlier. We already know how to solve it. One can find general solutions. Usually um, the general solution will have two arbitrary constants, C1 and C2. And then you can use the two now boundary conditions to find out those two constants, C1 and C2. We will now take some examples to see how the solutions can be found. Okay, so this is our first example. We have the boundary value problem for the following equation, y double prime plus y is zero. And the boundary conditions are given at zero and at pi over two. So y at zero shall be one and y at pi over two shall be zero. Okay, so we need to now find the general solution for this equation, which is a homogeneous equation. So we can write out the characteristic equation, which is a polynomial of degree two. So we have r squared plus one is zero, and which can easily be solved. Um, the two roots are plus minus i, so pure imaginary. And then we see that um, the solution should be sine and cosine functions. So the general solution will be c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x for some constants c1 and c2. Now we can put in the boundary conditions to find the constant c1 and c2. So first um, y0 equals 1. So y0 would be c1 times 1 plus c2 times 0, which is c1, and it shall be 1. And the second condition is y at pi over 2 is 0. And then um, y at pi over 2, that will be c1 times 0 plus c2 
times 1, which is just C2. So C2 must be 0. OK, so put that back in. We see that we found one solution, which is C1 is 1 and C2 is 0, so is cosine of x. OK, so in this example, um, it and the solution um, works similarly to what we have seen earlier, that the two conditions you put in um, helps you to find exactly um, one set of the numbers for the constant C1 and C2. OK, let's take another example for the same equation, but uh, we change the boundary conditions. Then it's expected that the boundary conditions would change the solution. Okay, so let's um, put new boundary conditions. Let's put y0 zero is 0 and uh, y at pi equals 2. Since we didn't change the equation, we still have the same general solution, which we repeat here in blue. And let's put in y0 zero is 0. What does that give me? So y0 would be c1 times 1 plus c2 times zero, so it's C1, so we get C1 must be zero. And then the second condition, y pi equals two, so since we know um, we put in x equal pi, cosine of pi will be a negative one, so we get C1, and then um, sine of pi is zero, we get C2. So, okay, so this actually give us, I messed up with the sign here, it should be negative 2, okay? But still, we reach a contradiction. So C1 cannot be 0 and negative 2 at the same time. And therefore, um, we can conclude that there are no solutions. Let's further explore the... Um, different boundary conditions, how they affect the solution. So let's look at these two conditions. y0 is 0, y pi is 0. So these are homogeneous boundary conditions. So again, we have the same general solution. And uh, let's put in y0 is 0. So we get c1. And then c1 must be 0. And now um, y at pi is 0. And then if you put um, pi here, this is a negative 1, but c1 is 0. And then um, sine of pi is 0. So um, y of pi equals 0, as long as c1 is 0 for any values of c2. OK, therefore, we have c1 is 0, and c2 can be arbitrary. OK, then we can plug this back into the solution, and we found that y equals some constant c2 times sine x is a solution with any c2. So here we have an example of two-point boundary value problems with uh, infinitely many solutions. OK, let's take one more example, um, slightly more complicated, and we have an equation that's uh, non-homogeneous on the right-hand side, but still second-order and linear. y double prime plus 4y is cosine x. And uh, boundary conditions are given at 0 and pi, where it's given in the form of a derivative. So the derivative shall be 0 at the two points. OK, let's first find the general solution for the homogeneous equation by setting up a um, characteristic polynomial, which we have r squared plus 4 is 0, and we get two roots, plus minus 2i, pure imaginary, and therefore the solution will be sine and cosine, the solution for the homogeneous equation, which we call it yh. So c1 cosine 2x plus c2 sine 2x. And the next step is to find a particular solution for the non-homogeneous equation. 
there we use the method of a variable coefficient. We guess a particular solution, we call it capital Y, in the same form as the right hand side, A times cosine X. The reason for that is uh, there is not the first derivative of Y present here. Okay, And then if you differentiate this Y twice, yeah, you differentiate cosine twice, you get negative cosine, therefore we have that. Then we can put those in into the um, equation. So y double prime is this plus 4 times y shall equal to cosine. And we can um, drop cosine common factor everywhere. And then we have 4a minus a is 3a equals 1. Then a is 1 third. So this will give us the general solution. So y would be c1 cosine 2x plus c2 sine 2x plus the particular solution, 1 third cosine x. And here c1, c2 are arbitrary constants to be determined by these two boundary conditions. OK, so since the boundary conditions are given in terms of the derivative, let's differentiate our solution y and just write it out. So we differentiated each term, the sine cosine function, and this is what we get. Let's plug in the first condition, y prime as 0 is 0. So um, when x is 0, sine makes it 0, and this is 1. We get 2c, and sine is 0, so we get 2c equals 0, uh, c2, and then c2 has to be 0. The second condition is uh, y prime to pi equals 0. So put x to be pi, sine to pi is just 0. And then cosine um, at 2 pi is 1. So we get 2c again. And this is sine is 2 pi is still 0. So we get 2c equals 0, 2c2, and then we just have c2 0. So the two boundary conditions um, lead to a same um, condition, uh, conclusion, that is C2 is 0. And that means that we have not imposed anything on C1. C1 can be arbitrary. OK, now we can now conclude. Um, so C2 shall be 0. So we have this term plus that term um, in our solution, OK, this is y prime, so we need to go back to the y and put um, c1 to be arbitrary, which we call it just c, and uh, c2 is 0. So we have two terms, a constant c times cosine 2x plus 1 third cosine x is a solution for any arbitrary values of c. OK, let's make some observations and these are rather important. We have seen that for two-point boundary value problems, the question of existence and uniqueness of solutions is not so obvious. Recall that when we studied initial value problems for um, linear um, second-order equations, and the existence and uniqueness of solution is uh, guaranteed. But here we have seen that it's not. So this is a, a very different situation from the initial value problems we have studied earlier. So for linear two-point boundary value problems, we have seen through our examples that there are three possibilities. So the first case is that there is one unique solution. Second possibility is that there are no solutions at all. And finally, the third possibility is that there are infinitely many solutions. And I would like to um, recall or some flashback of uh, what we have learned possibly in high school, that is uh, to solve two linear equations with two unknowns. And do we see the similarities of this um, these observations with uh, what we have seen over there. We recall that we have similar conclusions depending on the system and the right-hand side numbers. 
we can have one unique solution or we can have no solutions at all or we can have infinitely many solutions right so yeah so it's curious that they are similar isn't it okay so um that is all i want to say for the current discussion on two-point boundary value problems in the next video in the future video we'll put this into use to find solutions of um eigenvalue problems okay so i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you next time